Harold and Delise Cable operate Brookview Sugar House, a small, sustainable business located in Morris, Connecticut. The pair are as mindful of the care required for the making of a quality product as they are for the sugar maples from which they gather the sap. This is the old style spout we used to use. You drill a 7 16 hole, or excuse me, 5 16 hole in a tree and uh, drive it into the tree. It's a pretty big wound for the tree. One time they thought the larger the wound, the more sap production. Mm get out of the tree and we found out that we can size these taps down considerably, make a less invasive wound to the tree and with a smaller wound we get just as much sap production. Once the sap has been collected from the trees it arrives to the sugar house. A system of pipes back to these secondhand wine making tanks. Actually these two cylinders each hold eight gallons, 800 gallons each, so we can take about 16, 1700 gallons of sap. And that's where the raw sap goes. Reverse osmosis is used to concentrate the sap by filtering out the water. It concentrates the minerals and the sugars in the sap. Why would you want to do that? Well, obviously, if you're taking sap that's 2% sugar and concentrating it to 4% sugar, that's going to lessen your boiling time. This can be a double-edged sword because it's the interplay between heat and time and sugar that caramelizes and makes the very best, most robust maple flavor. How many gallons of sap does it take to make one gallon of syrup? Well, it depends. A man by the name of Jones devised the rule of 86. You divide 86 by the sugar content of the sap to find the answer. If there's 2% sugar, 86 divided by 2 equals 43. So, if the sap has 2% sugar content, it will require 43 gallons of sap to produce one gallon of finished syrup. This is where it becomes 66 to 67% or very close sugar. So what happens is it comes in the back and the denser syrup is twist here and you can see Harold's, Harold's just drawing off yeah, get ready to. what he considers almost syrup or syrup. After it comes off of here, it will go into our gas finisher and that's where I check it with a hydrometer. And the hydrometer will give you the true reading of sap no matter what the boiling point is. And as long as you adjust it for temperature, because we're measuring density, not temperature. Right. Temperature is a good way to, to pull syrup off of a pan, off of an evaporator, but the boiling point always changes with barometric pressure. Checking to see if the syrup sheets indicates whether the syrup is finished. Making a quality product is a complex process. The sap is filtered at least six times and must be processed promptly as it will spoil quickly. And there are important details only a skilled sugar house operator will know. The color of the spout will actually determine how much sap you get. Um, there's been many studies done. Uh, the lighter color or clear colored or clear spouts tend to give more because they, they thaw out a little quicker and a darker spout will tend to make the tree, tree heal faster when the spout is in because the spout heats up and the tree identifies that warming spout as a foreign object and wants to heal. And as soon as the tree starts to heal, we, we get a reduced sap yield. Next time you're shopping for maple syrup, be sure to look for a local, small-scale producer who takes the time and care to create a robust, high-quality product all the while maintaining the integrity of the trees that make this sweet and nutritious delight possible.